Hi you guys. So this is my third attempt at filming my show and tell. I haven't gotten any further than three minutes in so far. So let's see how far we get this time. Um, I'm Carrie Penny, the Happy Crafty Homemaker. I'm here in South Carolina and I share my opinions, thoughts, views, projects, any number of things. Pippin, that door's locked, baby. You can't get into the room that way. Well, maybe it's not. He figured it out. So I have a small tiger cat named Pippin and a big black cat named Curzon. You never know when they're going to show up in a video. Half the time they're cl climbing all over me like they're toddlers. So um, if you've been following me for Vlogmas, you're aware that hidden in the Vlogmas videos is a giveaway um, to you guys for subscribing. I hit a hundred subscribers the other day and I'm almost halfway to 200 subscribers. So I will do a 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 subscribers giveaways. And then from there I will wait and do the 500s cause, uh, yeah, that's a lot of people. <laughs> um, so go, uh, check out the Vlogmas videos and, uh, Check it out, leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, I have a llama sweater on. Hopefully, uh, I don't wiggle around so much. My bells drive everybody crazy. Um, we are, this is the Tuesday after my Christmas party when I'm filming this. And I actually have another video to film right afterwards. So I am going to um, plow through as fast as possible without... Uh, losing any of the insanity that is my normal videos. <laughs> so, um, as far as finished projects go, I only have one up here to share and it's my Golden Squares shawl by Mary Stanton. And I did this out of Loops and Thread Charisma Tweed in Rose Garden. I still haven't blocked it, but I do have my ends woven in. Oof. <sighs> My other finished object for the last couple of weeks are a whole bunch of lumps of coal, which I've shared on my Instagram account. Um, I shared some in one of my Vlogmas videos. And of course, I've got to bring them upstairs. So that happened. Um, well, that's show and tell. <laughs> Bye. No, um, I actually have a whole bunch of acquisitions and updates and yeah. Uh, so I'm a little bit wackadoo. Uh, I've been on prednisone, which makes me really, really hyper, makes my blood sugar drop, which is reversed for most people. Um, I actually have to check my fasting blood sugar before every meal just to make sure I'm not sliding in under 80 every time I go to eat. I have to eat more starchy foods, which is not generally what I like, but after one of our leftovers from the party, is a delicious uh, chicken biryani. The chicken is great, don't get me wrong, but her rice is just amazing. Um, perfectly yummy and seasoned. And so at least I have, you know, rice <laughs> with a couple pieces of chicken. Um, most interesting way to eat chicken and rice, by the way. Um, so it also makes me kind of like extra ditzy. Sorry, my notebook, my notes notebook is down here leaning up against my, I'm literally surrounded in acquisitions right now. So on top of being kind of ditzy and a little brain dead, um, first acquisition I want to talk about is actually shoes I'm wearing today. Not only do I have this festive llama sweater, but I have a pair of festive llama shoes. And even though they're supposed to be Christmas shoes, they will not be. I like my llama shoes. Uh, those are Tom's. I ordered them directly from the Tom's website. So if you're interested in buying a pair, it's my first pair of Tom's. I still don't know how I feel about the feel. They come a bit high on my foot, but that's okay. They're cute. They're comfortable. I can, they're like bedroom slippers meet boat shoes. If that makes sense to anybody out there. Um, my whips, well, I did have one other finished object. That was the skirt that I wore for the Christmas party. So go back to the video that 
it's vlogmas day 15 and you can see that skirt um because that was the our party was on the 15th uh, but yeah, like that's all I've really gotten done the last couple weeks. I've been pretty dedicated to the blanket I've been sharing in most of my Vlogmas videos. I did go and pick up three more balls of yarn for that today, and that should cover the added width I need to get from shoulder to shoulder and, and have, you know, dra I, I like when I'm sleeping on the sofa, because we have the recliner sofas now, I like to lay out flat with the blanket up to my chin and have it drape around my shoulders and I kind of tuck it under my arms a little bit. So I need that added width. And because I did this one with 150 chains instead of, or I started it with a base of 150 stitches instead of the 125 I did for my harvest blanket. Uh, it's substantially longer, but um, we'll talk a little bit more about the blanket when we get to where I am on the 25 pound challenge, which this is, hopefully I remember to update you guys on that. That is on my notes and has been for my last two show and tell videos. I'm drinking another Tiesta tea. This one is peachy keen. It's really tasty. I need a little bit of caffeine to get me through at this point. My cup says it's the most wonderful time of the year. It is huge, it is giant, it is heavy, but I like it. Um, so we have two unboxings technically. Um, most of y'all follow me for my yarny goodness, entertained by my giant fabric wall. But um, I also do a lot of paper crafting. And I haven't mentioned it on the channel before, but I subscribe to the Simon Says Stamp um, card kit of the month club. I actually subscribed to this before I set the $150 goal or to, I was only going to spend $150 on craft supplies this year. Um, but I ended up making a bunch of money and yada, 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 yada. But so I never intended to count this towards that because i had already signed up for it before I set that goal for 2018. I'm going to continue the subscription uh, into 2019 and I'm still not going to count it towards my money spent. Um, but I did want to share with you what I got for the month of December. Unfortunately, it got held up in the mail as did my knit crate, which finally just got here today. So I did want to share with you what I got in here. Oh, they normally send a little sucker, but instead I got a candy cane. A Tim Holtz Ranger Distress Oxide and Festive Berries. Uh, this kit is like, I think it's $29 with shipping or after shipping. It's really not bad and you'll see why I feel that way about it. But we've got sequins, tag, watercolor, paint samples. Ooh, these are cute. Cards on watercolor stock, envelopes, a really pretty little die set. This is Santa's workshop. Um, it's a half of a six by six pad. Well, you can't even see that. It's half of the six by six pad. Um, I don't know any of them that give you a full six by six pad. Um, almost all of them seem to give you half the pad. This is by Cardabella. I actually have the whole kit for this. This was one of the few splurge items that I did make um, this year. Last year was um, a very Merry Christmas, and that was just phenomenal. Very retro. This one has more of the um, 50s, 60s kind of feel, once again, except it's more, much more of a whimsical design. I really love those cards, card bases, a giant stamp set. And I actually really like, I don't know why I like the postage stamp stamp so much, but I also really like the fact that you have multiple different things. Uh, a lot of times when you get their kits, the stamp set does coordinate to the paper set very similarly. Last year's big Christmas kit was the doodle bug 
seasonal one, which was so cute, you just can't believe it. And then two of the sticker sheets. So um, because this did get here so late, obviously I'm not going to get Christmas cards made out of it at this point. Oh yeah, I forgot. So they do give you an idea sheet, but they also give you some of their um, 110 pound cardstock as well every time. Their cardstock is really nice, by the way, for card bases. If you're looking for a good one and don't, um, I can only ever find Nina in the bright white or the ivory colors. Um, so if you're, if you make your own card bases, uh, and I don't think the Simon Says Stamp prices are that bad. A couple of people have said they feel like they're too much. I don't really think that they're that bad, but that's just my opinion. But if you're look, if you have somebody who's into card making or paper crafts, this is, I, I haven't mentioned it on here just because it wasn't yarn related, but this is one I really enjoy. And I've used, I've gotten seven of the last, seven out of the last 10 and I've used four full kits. Um, one kit I ended up, Everybody does these like 10 card one kit videos and then show their scraps afterwards. I ended up with 24 cards out of one kit. Um, it was a very sticker heavy kit. Um, so, I mean, you can make these kits go a long way. They don't seem like they should, but even without using the stamps, just the paper products that come in there, you can make those go a very, very long way. So, the, like I said... I got to keep it rolling today, guys. Um, where's my cutter? There it is. I actually have a little safety cutter that I keep forgetting to... I need to leave it here on the stand, a.k.a. my Cricut Easy Press box in a kid's chair. Um, but my neck crate finally got here. Um, I don't know why I've been having so many postal delays where I am. We're in, I'm in South Carolina. I'm not in Canada. We don't have rolling postal strikes. I know it's that time of the year, but we have postal trucks running through our neighborhood three times a day right now doing package two for package deliveries and one for standard mail delivery. Um, I got a notification on Friday that this was going to be delivered on Saturday. This was going to be delivered on Monday that this was going to be delivered. I actually received mail from USPS on Sunday once again and still no net crate box. So I'm sure many of you are just dying to know what I got. The same thing as everybody else. <laughs> um, the, Knitting needles pen, obviously. And the same blue that everybody else has gotten. I was really hoping for the green this time. Um, I don't have a problem with this, but the green was really pretty. Um, Vitalana Heathered Chunky, 60 yards. This one is 100% wool. Um, everybody else keeps calling this coarse or not soft or only kind of squishy. I think a better term to describe it is it feels durable. It's not super tightly spun. It's got definitely more of a roving feel to it, even though it feels, it seems to be plied. Um, no, it's not plied. It is a twisted roving. Um, but this is literally the color everybody I've seen got. Uh, this is triple lux. Um, I don't think I would have bought this one and I'm with everybody else. I don't know how I feel about the crochet hat. Uh, it's just not my, that's not my jam. Uh, so I'll probably come up with something different to do with that. And because it's only 120 yards total, I may like slide that in as soon as I finish my blanket. But the um, knitting pattern actually, see, tell me that green is not just gorgeous. Um, I don't think the knitting pattern is bad for this one. Do they have a good picture of it? Where her hair's not covering it. Um, it's really pretty. I like it, but um, I don't wear a lot of cowls. Oh, they actually have information on where they bought the pins and stuff. 
How cute. Things to put on my wish list. I don't think he has, my husband has much time to buy, buy stuff left. But, uh, I mean, it's pretty, but it's kind of a basic cowl. And once again, I really just don't wear cowls that much. Um, yeah, we had about a month of it being freezing. Like we had a lot of days where our highs were down in the 20s and 30s. And now we're back up to our highs being in the 50s and 60s. So I will actually, after I'm done filming today, I will be taking this back off and putting on just a long sleeve or three quarter length t-shirt. So those are my two items for unboxing. Um, I will be doing a dedicated video on the Jimmy Bean box. I filmed it once, did some more research, and decided not to upload the video that I filmed last Friday. Um, I didn't say anything inflammatory or anything that I didn't mean. Pippin, please stop eating the interfacing. Pippin, just go cuddle up somewhere. Um, I didn't say anything I didn't mean and isn't true in the video, but I don't feel like I expressed myself in a very clear manner um, as to what my problem really was. Pippin, stop that. I have two of those uh, balls of yarn that have like the animal heads on them. And one of them's a unicorn and he keeps trying to take the unicorn's head. Like I've got to hurry up and make those for my grandkids just so I can get them out of the house. Otherwise, he's going to have that poor unicorn head torn completely off and ripped up and no bueno. Um, so I'm going to stick to a dedicated video for that. I might actually come back and film it later tonight because, like I said, I'm very tired and very wound up at the same time, which is probably not good for me. <laughs> but let's see, are there any more? That's just a bunch of random stuff from dragging upstairs. Um, we'll keep on rolling with the acquisitions here. Uh, so I mentioned these in one of my Vlogmas videos, I think. Bags for Beaker. Uh, hilariously, before Debbie gave me a shout out, I had actually gone out and bought three of them. After I saw her video. If you're not familiar with what Bags for Beaker are... Um, they are an animal sanctuary, animal preserve, and they're using their feed bags and turning them into tote bags and selling them to help raise money and keep all the animals on their little farm fed. Actually, in one of these, whoop, not only are the bags like Sorry, I'm totally like smacking my camera all over the place. Um, so not only are the bags like handmade, you get to pick the type of handle you want and they go to serve a great purpose. They actually wrote me a little handwritten note and it says, Dear Carrie, thank you for choosing bags for Beaker. We really love the piggy and sheep bags and hope that you love them too. With gratitude, Nicole and Beaker Butt. And this is Beaker. He got in a fight, lost his beak, and now he's being loved and taken care of. So if you want to go check them out, their Etsy shop is Bags for Beaker. And of course, I'll put a link down below like I do for everybody else. Um, all right. We'll just go here. <sighs> There has been lots of like random shopping, but like, believe it or not, this is like stuff that was bought over the last three months that took forever to get here. Like the um, Lion Brand box that I unboxed during as one of my Vlogmas videos. I bought that on Black Friday, or actually I bought it Thanksgiving night after we got done eating dinner and it w didn't get here till like the ninth or something like that. It took forever to get here. And it's because one of the items was sold out. And them, I knew the item was sold out. So it was going to be after December before I got it. But once again, I'm not in a hurry to make that blanket. Some of these other things, though. Guys, really? But um, one of the things I did was place a big Think Geek order. And uh, I got myself the Harry Potter pajamas that I wore uh, in my Vlogmas video 
Harry Potter pajamas, Doctor Who socks, Star Trek living room, watching Lord of the Rings. Um, but as far as like knittery goes, they had a whole bunch of stuff on clearance that I thought was just like super cute. So I got this adorable summer corgi bag, which I mean, what, who doesn't need giant canvas bags in their lives? Not me. Cause I need more. I, got, I actually meant to send a link to this for Ross of the Smells Like Yarn podcast. Smell great guy. If you were not a kid in the 90s or if you did not have children in the 90s, this is a huge group of the 90s Nickelodeon characters. We've got Rugrats. Ah, Real Monsters, Invader Zim, Cat Dog, Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. I was totally a Nick kid. I was not a Disney kid. <laughs> I have told y'all this before and I will tell you again. I am a huge post-it junkie. Um, I, I used to spend many, 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 many years being afraid to use my post-it notes because I was like, they're going to run out. And I'm not sure why. Like, I don't understand that about myself. But even the pen writes in orange. The only thing they could have done to make this pen better is make it a green slime pen. But that's pushing back towards the early, eight, early 90s. Sorry. Early 80s. Late 80s, early 90s. Back when, uh, who was it? Alanis Morissette was on Don't, You Can't Do That on Television. Yeah, I watched that stuff too. Um, but yeah, I actually, of all, all the shows that are listed on here, my two favorite have to be Rocco and All Real Monsters. Rugrats was fun. And I love like, like it was a little bit, um, too young for me when it was on. And by the time I got around to babysitting is when I really started like watching it more. My brother watched it a lot, but, um, I was totally down with All Real Monsters. So, <laughs> and Rocco... Like, even now, like, I go back and watch some of those episodes, and I'm like, how did, how did, like, our parents let us watch this stuff? Because, uh, there's some pretty dirty jokes on there. I mean, they're cheeky even as an adult, and I was just about to die laughing at the fact that our parents were totally okay with us watching that stuff in the 90s. Um, so I got that from Think Geek. I needed, um, and we'll keep going actually from here. But, um, one of the things I'm doing is I'm putting together a bunch of accessory pouches to keep in all my projects bags, because now that I'm rotating my project bags more and I'm, I do have a lot of whips going. I have socks, I have cowls, I have blankets, I have shawls, I have bl a, 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 endless number of projects right now. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm trying to use up a lot of stuff that I really like but I don't know what to do with. Um, and the best way to go through those things is to just pick projects and go. Um, but that has led to a lot of project bags. And I prefer to have an essentials kit that I can just drop into all my project bags. So I got one from Darn Good Yarns when I... Pardon me. We just had lunch, hence the hot tea and stuff now. Ah, uh, um, I got the one bag from Darn Good Yarns that was part of their sample stuff. Um, I had another one that was from When I Sell Beauty Control. I found this one, which, once again, with the way my cats are in and out of videos, you know I like cats. Uh, I have my box that's in my desk. I have a old Bath and Body Works bag that I'm using. But I need needles, scissors, tape measure, and there uh, a couple stitch markers for each one. So I'm trying to like get all those pulled together, but I don't want to like just have a big packing party either. So as I'm finding bags like that, like I am picking them up. And the last thing I ordered that's kind of themed is you remember I got the Star Trek project bag from Gimme Yarn Four One Eight, and. I found enamel pens to go on it. 
I'm so excited, you guys. <laughs> Good morning, pasta. Anywho, so that's what I got from Think Geek. I ordered myself a prize. And unfortunately, like, I haven't had a chance to use it because it's been sitting here, like, waiting to talk to you guys about it. But it is a fabric yarn bowl in a little dumpling shape with the Grinch, who is, like, for some reason, Dr. Seuss has been my, like, personal theme. My Christmas outfit was kind of Donna Reed meets Whoville. And last year, I actually wore a Grinch shirt that I made. So, no, I did not make this year's shirt. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me. This is from the Felted Garden um, Etsy shop, the Felted Garden. Come on, camera. There we go. It's like literally my camera doesn't want me to not film today. There we go. Um, it's got these really awesome snaps. I've got some from K-Snap, I think, that do this where it's like just super. I mean, you can easily pull it without ripping the fabric. But like when you tug, I mean, you can see how much tension is on the fabric there. But when you actually like try to lever it like you do when you open things, they pop perfectly. I love these snaps. But it's got a kind of squared off bottom. You've got your little yarn yarn project in there. And it's like a little travel yarn bowl. And I think that's absolutely precious. And how I've been using my yarn bowls recently, maybe in all bougie using the, the cut glass faux crystal uh, candy dish and stuff. And I've pulled some of my vintage Pyrex and used it. And the yarn bowl that's actually trapped in a project and that I need to frog still. That happened. Uh, let's see. Where to go next? Okay. Well, we we're just talking about my project kits. So I decided to pull a Cresta from the Secret Yarnery. And I bought a whole bunch of the tape measures she likes. And I mean, for the price, like these are pretty, as she calls it, slamming. But uh, I used to have like a whole bunch of these. And I'm not sure what happened to them, but... I don't need anything fancy. I just need it to work. And these just got here today too. Um, I had not had a chance to open them, but I appear to have at least one standard tape measure included. But I think I got the package of 10. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I hope you love looking at the top of my head. Weirdos. Oh, yeah. So I'll just chuck these in the project bags. Um, I decided to also try a pair of her favorite scissors. The only thing I don't like about these is the fact that they don't have a cover. The ones I use downstairs a lot are actually the Westcott brand, and I got them probably a little over a year ago for about $2 each. And of course, like I found them on an Amazon deal of the day thing. Yeah, it's not going to zoom in. And I'm about to lose my other hand because Pippin once again decides he wants to live in my lap. And of course, he's not going to like show himself. That would be too pedestrian for this cat. Can you? What time? I'm not telling you not to snuggle. I want to show everybody how cool you are. <laughs> Me too, but mommy, I just want snuggles. Yep. This is my tiny tiger. This is the predatory animal I live with. Um, I got a pickup tool from Silhouette. Because I finally got a diamond painting. There was a Santa Claus one that I found that I actually really, really liked. So 
I grabbed that. Uh, that's the end of this bucket. Here, I'm going to pause this for just one second. Oh, potato day. He is still not letting me up. Anyway, also mentioned in one of my Vlogmas videos, Pantone review to come, Karen Pantone. I got a couple of different colors to try out. I might do a giveaway. I don't know. We'll see how I feel about it. Big bag of Barcelona. These were on the low, low deal sale of like $30 for Black Friday. And I just happened to be getting on Michael's to look at something else. And they were on sale for $15 or on clearance for $15. And I was like, that's the price that I actually paid for those. So I got those. And I think that takes us up through my acquisitions. We're doing so good. We're only half an hour in. I think that's also what happens when I don't sit down and film is normally I have like interesting stories. I fill all this with not just here's stuff I bought. Here's what I spent my money on. Hey, y'all look at my fancy stuff. Um, sir. Oh, now I'm being licked. He's over here like snuggling my hand, doing this and licking it. Not a licky cat. The other one. You've seen his videos, like, Pippin normally not so much. He does that when he's really sleepy and really just wants to, like, be left alone. So I wanted to do a poundage check. If you guys haven't watched my first show and tell video, um, one of the reasons why I started my channel is I actually wanted to have accountability. Wow, it looks so slouchy like this. Uh, I wanted some accountability for what I was doing with the, with using up my stash. That's why I started blogging back at the beginning of the year. I was sharing and showing like what I was doing, what I was using for my stash. Um, there's actually like one set of progress pictures back in the spring where I was finally able to clear off the top of my um, donation yarn stuff. Um, because I had a stack of stuff that wouldn't fit on any of the shelves. And now all that like fits in normal places. So, you know, I've seen progress this year. Um, but I decided like, let's just make this even more like extra. And I wanted to use 25 pounds of yarn between the time I started my channel, which my first video was uploaded August 28th and the new year. I am right now sitting at 298 ounces which is three quarters of the way down. Now, I didn't think I was going to make it until I got the yarn for my blanket. Now, technically, that is not out of my stash, I know. Um, but as much as I would have enjoyed working from my stash for that, I don't have any Christmas color yarn. And I really wanted a Christmas blanket so I'm going to still count that, especially given the fact it's taking me like two weeks to do it. Um, but that one, each ball is five ounces. I'm going to have almost 18 balls going in, which is 90 ounces. I'm at 298. So I'm going to be within a pound of my goal, hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow. Uh, so it looks like I will actually make the 25 pound challenge I set out for myself. Now, that being said, that was four months, 25 pounds of yarn. It is possible, but I have been very limited in my other crafting. Um, even trying to get up here, like I didn't even make Christmas cards this year. I didn't have time to do Halloween cards, Thanksgiving cards. Now that's not all of the fault of like the 25 pound challenge. I lose five days out of my week for like hiding away in the craft room, doing stuff because my husband's home or I'm babysitting her grandson. Um, but now Tater Tot is getting better at letting me be up here by myself. And if he needs something coming upstairs and asking, and he's also been really good for the last year at not getting into the stuff he's not supposed to be in. So I'm able to leave him downstairs more and more to play and entertain himself. Like right now he's downstairs taking his nap. Um, but I don't, I don't want to neglect him and I don't really have a space for him to work up here right now either. 
So I can't make that an everyday thing. Um, and I have other stuff to do too, but it's not like I, I would lock myself up here for 24 hours. Like, well, I would, but <laughs> you know, once you start rolling on a project, you don't want to stop and put it down. Um, and I've been getting really into audio books again and re-listening to all the Harry Potter books, which is always fun for me. Um, but yeah, I, it, it's been very hard to do anything else with distractions and trying to focus on using yarn. I'm not going to do 25 pounds in four months again, but I think next year I am going to set the goal for 50 pounds. Um, and I'm going to try to keep that all for my stash. Once again, I really do want to use my stash. I have a giant stash. Um, but I don't want to limit myself for what I can, can and can't purchase next year either. Um, you know, Hobby Lobby had some amazing sales on things I actually use and I actually like. So I'd like the freedom to be able to purchase those things when they're 70% off instead of saying Hail Mary that they're back. It's a, or something similar as they are at a similar kind of price one day, eventually, maybe, um, when Charisma goes on sale for $1.99 a ball with a 25% off coupon, I'd like to be able to buy some and not feel pressured or guilty about it. So I don't think I'm going to do a cost line like I did this year. Um, even because that got messed up between selling things, giving, being given gift cards to use at craft stores, the budget I set for myself, the fair money that I won, I've ended up with like $500 over my budget that I could in theory spend on craft supplies. And it finally got to the point I quit tallying uh, about two weeks ago what I was spending in craft supplies because there's, I mean, unless I go out and buy like $500 in yarn today, I'm going to come nowhere near my goal. Um, or I'm going to still be under my goal. So I just don't want to feel pressured and limited and particularly in the post Christmas clearances and stuff. Oh, well, I'm not allowed to buy that because I only have a $150 budget. And if I don't make the same amount of money as I did last year, what am I like? I don't want to put myself in that position, but at the same time, I am going to say it has to be a darn good sale or I have the, I have the perfect project and I want to start this today. Um, so I will be more conscientious once again this year as to using my stash versus, yeah. So I might do 50 pounds for the whole year. That gives me an extra four months to do other stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I have, I mean, some really pretty yarns that I would really love to work with, but I just haven't done it. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep focusing on trying to get things worked through and done. Um, I'd like to get one whole four by four cube storage out of this room. Eventually, one of them is broken, so I would like to replace it for that sake. Um, but eventually, I would like to replace my super cheap ones with some nice ones. And one of the goals is to eventually come in here and redo this room. I would really like the eave break to be higher than five foot. Um, it's shoulder height for me. So the short billy bookcases... And the four by four, four cubes are really all that will fit in here. Um, I don't feel like I'm utilizing my space properly for storage because my desk and around my desk and under my desk are still being used as storage. And it's because I've lost so much of my vertical space that I don't have, I don't want necessarily eight foot ceilings. But it would be nice to at least have a low standard <laughs> on my break for a frog. I mean, the, I'm at very low on my on the break in the eve. And I know there are rooms that are worse than this, so I'm not going to complain too much. But this room needs some work. And there's room 
in the attic space. I, I'm not sure why they broke it so low because that's not where the Eve house is. Um, there's a massive, and particularly on the side with my big yarn wall and paper wall, um, the Eve doesn't break until six foot on the attic side, but I think it breaks at six foot further back. So it may actually, where the wall sits, be even higher there. And it's nothing but attic space. The access for everything in the garage is underneath me. The access for this side of the house, the upstairs, the side of the upstairs is all behind me here. That's literally wasted attic space over there. So there is one set of wires that run from the junction box in the garage through there. And they go into my bathroom for the light fixture. That's what, yeah. That seems to be the only thing that's hooked up over there. Everything else runs underneath. Riddle me this, Batman. Who was the electrician that thought that was a good idea? Anyway. So I, I, it looks like I will make the 25 pound challenge as it stands right now. Um, like I said, it's going to be 90 ounces if I use all 18 balls. Because I did buy the three extra balls today to finish it. Um, so I, I'm proud of that accomplishment. When I got back from Portland and had set that as a goal while we were in Portland, Oregon, I didn't, th didn't think I was going to make it. I'm sorry, baby bug. I got to get my legs straight. Here. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen pictures of like him curled up in the floor in my lap and he will sit there for hours on top of you. If you let him fall asleep in your lap and you fall asleep too, he will not bother you. He will just stay snuggly sweet and just floop the whole time. Um, so I updated you on poundage. The other thing I've been tracking is my finished objects and do, 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 do. To date, I have finished 127 projects. And that's not, I say that, but at the beginning of the year, I was doing a lot of baby hats for uh, little, little hats, big hearts. Um, where? That's the weights. So I've got those listed as donation hats, 12, donation hats, 10. So technically, hexes, technically that's probably the best way to do it. Individual cards. I did 90 Easter cards, two face scrubbies, three face scrubbies, um, flower cards. So I've got a number of things on here that while it looks like one item, like... I did multiples of them, so I'm closer to about 200 finished project, projects total if we count individual small things like each hat that I donated and things like that. Um, there were 32 hats total that I sent to Clean of Heart and Catholic Charities earlier here in Columbia um, earlier this seasonal change, winter weather, but not winter season. Um, so, and I don't have those counted individually. I have a lot of those counted as hats for Lent. And I was doing two or three a week at that point. So, um, I mean, I can't say I've been a slouch when it has come to crafting this year. I haven't done as much charity work as I'd like to. And I haven't done as much uh, gift knitting as I'd like to. But there's always next year. He's just tucking his head under and being cute. Um, so I had two things I wanted to talk to you guys about real quick, and they're both involving scarves. And then I'm going to let you go because I'm already 45 minutes in. And like I said, I still have another video I need to film today. So, um, one, since it is holiday knitting time, 
If you were not aware of the fact that because you're custom making things for your friends and family, a standard scarf length is the height of the recipient. Just gives you the perfect length for any scarf. Um, so if you can guesstimate they're six footish, six foot two ish, uh, making a scarf to that length gives them the perfect drape and in particular to be able to wrap around their neck. That's not for fashion scarves. Um, fashion scarves are a little bit different. Um, you know, obviously a cowl does not need to be six feet long. Um, but if you always have scarves that are too big or too small for your recipients, and I know I've seen a lot of comments about that as I've been watching Vlogmas where people are making their gifts to give. Um, Carrie's helpful hint when it comes to knitting and crochet, make the scarf the height of the recipient. If you don't know who the recipient is, look at the average height for that, that like the men in your family, the women in your family. Um, and that should definitely help you get a better, I think this looks long enough and the ends here. Um, I didn't know this tip. I actually got this tip from Vicki Howell when she was still doing the nitty gritty and she had this great like little commercial built in where she had a football player wearing her hat or her scarf and her trying to wear this basketball player's scarf and the height differential and how they, where they hit and everything. It was just, it was cute. It was Vicki Howe. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's not a unique trick. It's not, it's, I know a lot of people didn't watch that show because they didn't have access to HGTV when it was on. Uh, the other good one that was on there at the same time was Uncommon Threads. And I really missed that show too. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's one of those helpful tips to making things for your friends and family just a smidge bit easier. The other thing, and it is scarf related because I really discovered it while making my Doctor Who scarf. If you're familiar with the number of color changes in that thing, if you're planning on starting one, may the Lords of Gallifrey be with you. <laughs> it is a lot of ends to weave in. It is a lot of work. It is a labor of love. It is dedication. Um, weave in your ends as you go. I, I hate doing it. I hate doing it with a passion. There is not a needle in the world that's going to make me want to weave in my ends. But weave in your ends as you go. And I don't mean like wrapping them as you go, wrapping them into the work. Sit down and finish your ends. Um, like on the blanket, I'll do... The pass where I'm changing the yarn, knit over it, and when I get a couple inches down, I stop and weave it in. Once the yarn breaks, I stop and weave in ends two or three times, depending on if there was a break in the yarn on top of the end of the ball of yarn. Yes, that happened. Six knots in one ball. Um, it's a time saver in the end. Once you cast off your project, once you do the last stitch of your project, you're done. I know it's a best practice. I know not everybody wants to do it. Do Try what I'm doing where you're keeping a finishing kit in all your project bags. I have one by the sofa. I have one in my desk. And now I'm trying to keep one in all my project bags. I don't have a set of needles by my bed, but that's about to change. I'm actually going to be testing out the wool needles versus... I, I've always used the Susan Bates darners for weaving it in. So I'm going to try the wool needles and I've got a set of, I did not, and I'm in the minority. I did not like the standard size clover chibi needles. I thought they were too fat and too unwieldy. I, I did, it, it pulled my stitches way too much. Now that's funny because my phone was on silent when my husband called. Anyway, I love how apps like decide to override what I'm trying to do. Um, I am going to try the lace size chibi needles to see how I like those, if those are better. But the standard ones, I didn't like that much. Um, the wool needles come in a couple different sizes. I've got the ones from Premiere coming. I do have a new acquisition from Premiere coming, which is the mystery skein packs. I got a worsted and a DK coming. 
along with the needles. Uh, there's, I may have grabbed a project bag too, just cause I was like $3 away from free shipping. Um, so yeah, that there's so many other things I really wanted to say to you guys today, but I don't want to keep you here forever. Once again, we're at 50 minutes already and I've been upstairs probably around an hour and a half because I kept getting interrupted while trying to get this video started. So I'm going to go downstairs and check on tater tot. I hope I covered everything and I hope I didn't come off as being a total and utter wackadoo because I'm certainly feeling a bit like a wackadoo at this point. <laughs> um, I use a little too much of my mom and me some days. Hi, mom. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. My notes appear to have all been gone through. I need a nap. So I'll probably actually film the G Jimmy Bean bag. Jimmy Bean, big beanie bag. Ba unboxing thing later tonight. I'll come back. Like I said, I really need to better explain how I felt about it. Um, I want to ensure that it doesn't sound vindictive uh, because it's really not about that. It's just and it's almost pointless because they're changing the whole. Anyway. Pippin just got back in my lap, so now he's trying to make it hard to get up again. Here. Can you say bye-bye to everybody at home? Can you say bye-bye? Pippin. Pippin. <laughs> he's like, no, I won't even make eye contact with the camera. Um, you know, clearly it's nap time, so we're going to go snuggle up and take a nap. We'll see if Corazon wants to join us. And Tater Tot's already down there. So <laughs> He's got a little people-y face now. Um, Tater Tot's already down there asleep. So we will catch you guys later. Bye. Say bye. Bye-bye.